We're joined hey, by interim head coach Miles Joseph. It's a long sleeve today. <laughs> <laughs> a little chilly out. Sorry. Good luck. Miles, that's three straight wins, unbeaten in four. Just go ahead and or, unbeaten in five? Four. Sorry. Uh, five. It doesn't matter. We've got to make the playoffs. In, in a lot. <laughs> three straight wins. Um, you guys are on a roll. Just go ahead and start us off with your thoughts on tonight. Uh, I would say probably our best performance so far, front to back. Uh, the first half, I feel like we controlled a lot of the game, especially with our uh, ability to step into the front half of the field and press them and cause them to uh, make some turnovers. And we would gain possession out of that in the front half of the field, which is great. Um, created a lot of chances off of that. And then second half, uh, we continued. And then we uh, refreshed with some exciting players again. And, uh, you know, we were able to get in behind and create some more scoring chances and not have to, you know, after we gave up the goal, we didn't have to, like, sit all the way back and protect ourselves. We still uh, tried to progress and, and keep it in the front half of the field. So really, really, uh, you know, really, really good performance from our guys. Uh, they really just – Stepped up to the challenge in the short uh, short period of time between games, and uh, gonna get ready for the game on Saturday now. So, <laughs> okay, we will open it up to questions. Hey Miles, um, obviously gonna be tough to not have Christian on Saturday, but um, what can you say just about the importance of of how he played tonight and how he's been playing lately? Yeah, uh, I mean he's been he's been he's been great. Uh, he he was another like just incredible performance tonight. Um, I also thought Brian Acosta next to him uh, did a great job tonight, and you know, so he'll be in there uh, on Saturday um, alone. But no. um, but uh, it, yeah, Christian just uh, continues to impress, like as always, like his energy, but um, his positioning is getting so much better, and his ability to control, uh, you know, uh, the pockets of space with his possession now and. Um, he, he, he just, I'm just really happy with him. Although at halftime, if he didn't score the goal, it would have been a different story because he got the yellow card. <laughs> it's great, yeah. Forward, yeah, we had a um, good laugh about that one. And, and you know, another player in the midfield who I think has been a big part, obviously, the last few games was Evander. Yeah. You, know, you know, him being able to slide back a little bit in the midfield, I'm wondering just yeah. his comfortability and, and, you know, how he's sort of been able to thrive in, in that spot. Yeah, I mean he's he's uh, he's such a talented player. So the important thing for us is to get him in the right positions to be to succeed. So um, I think the way we're playing and the uh, the structure which we're playing and, and the clear identity of the you know like the wingers opens up the space for him and and how we're building out and uh, so you know I think he's just you know if you give him some time and space and that's what the game's all about time and space. Uh, he's going to make things happen. He's going to bring other players into the game, and and he's going to do stuff on his own. And that's just the type of player he is. So, really, like, he's an exciting player. So, going back to uh, Brian Acosta, when you guys signed him, might have flown a little bit under the radar with some fans who forgot that he came into this league as a designated player. Yeah. Um, but for my money, he was maybe man of the match tonight. Just yeah. ball winning, aerial yeah. duels, passing. Um, what, how how important is it to um, have been able to find a player like like him and bring him in for this stretch run? Yeah, again, I think you know Ned and uh, Jack, you know, have identified a lot of players to bring in to this group, and um, you know I'm familiar familiar with him because I've been in the league for a while, and uh, he, he's just one of those players that when he became available, it was you know basically a must have. And uh, he's just he he brings he represents a lot of what Portland Timbers are. I know he played in Colorado, but um, with his grit and, and the way he plays the game, uh, he's a Portland Timber. And then um, prefacing this with all due respect to Gio and Carlos, uh, but the turnaround under your uh, leadership has been pretty significant with results and performances. Um, I'm just wondering if you can peg that down to any one specific thing or has there been a mentality shift or something like that i mean i think uh i think all the, i think you know a lot of players became healthy 
I think we were able to uh, then set some structure in place and define some clear roles with everybody available. Um, and, and, and now I think it's just the guys are seeing things a lot clearer and it's been, uh, it's been really nice to watch. Uh, thanks for taking the time, Coach. There was a stretch after you scored the second goal in the second half where it seems like San Jose kind of woke up. They pulled one back, kind of seemed like backline kind of found themselves in the back in your back heels. What was the message kind of to the team there, kind of when you're kind of riding through kind of like that stretch? Yeah, I think it's just remain calm. We, we've we had so much possession and control like within the games. You know, I'd say control. It's like you can control the game with your defending as well. So. Uh, in some moments, you know, we had them basically where we wanted them. So, uh, you know, obviously San Jose is such a good team and, uh, you know, they have a great coaching staff and a lot of talented players. And, and for us to do that to them tonight was a credit to our guys and, and the way they bought in uh, to what, we're, what we've been uh, working on. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Uh, I want to talk about those substitutions a bit because um, I noticed that – Espria came in when we could have had maybe Mabiala or somebody. Are you bringing in those strikers um, because every game is a playoff game, or would that strategy have been different? Did you play soccer? Did you I was a water polo player. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but, um, yeah, just kind of talk us through that decision. Yeah, that's uh, – I'm glad that you noticed that. Uh, we felt uh, tonight that – our structure and the way we we're uh, controlling the game with defending uh, and and you know on the counter um, as they push forward at the end of the game that we might be able to catch them again and get the third goal. Our structure defending and, and the way they were playing was really good, and so we didn't want to disrupt that. Uh, so we we decided to put on another attacker and to make them think about us a little bit more, which uh, I felt worked, uh, and, th and then kill the game. I mean, you got a spree on the ball in the corner at the end of the game. I mean, who's getting the ball off him? <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Coach. Um, congrats on the three points. Uh, can you just talk to us in general just about the midfield? Because everyone's brought up a different midfielder, and it just kind of speaks to the volumes of how good they played tonight. But is this kind of how you envision them kind of going forward? And yeah. yeah, again, it's uh, we have so many good players on this team. Um, so, uh, you know, if you if you have a way that you want to play in a set system, like within a structure um, that, you know, when everybody's healthy, I think it's I think it's important that all those roles are defined. I don't know if you noticed, but we moved, you know, Brian into the middle tonight and Christian a little bit higher because it gave us a little bit more. Um, in the attacking half and put a little more pressure on them. So that was one, you know, uh, you know, as a coach, you're a little bit nervous because things went well in Austin. But uh, full disclosure, I had so much confidence in Brian because I've seen him play for so long that he could do it. And uh, Christian, uh, that's his natural role. So um, you don't want to always, like, change what you're – like, the personnel because then there's too many changes um, and they don't have a rhythm. So you got to – um, set the structure of the players and then have like a fluid rotation. So, yeah, I mean, with the midfield, just couldn't be more pleased with them. They're uh, understanding their roles, and that's all we can ask. Okay, we have time for one last question on Zoom. Tiago, go ahead. Good night, coach. Congratulations for the victory. Thank you. I know you've already talked about him, but I have to ask once again, Evander was decisive in the victory. How do you see his importance for the team in these moments? Uh, I mean, he's he's very important to the team. You know, uh, I think everybody sees it. Uh, it's not just him on the ball all the time, too. It's the spaces he's taken up defending for us as well. I mean, he covers ground. He he's one of the always one of the top ground coverers on the field, and which is which is amazing for. Um, somebody like, like him, at, like the caliber of player that he is, uh, to take responsibility on the other side of the ball because he could very well just stand around and, and just want the ball all the time. And it's not in his DNA. And it's, uh, it's really pleasing. And, you, you know, those players you can really trust. All right, we will wrap it there. Thank you for your time and congrats again. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.